Have you ever wanted to work in AI, but you're not quite sure where to start? Well, this is a common origin story, but not because the AI field is lacking in opportunity. In fact, it's actually quite the opposite. There's so much opportunity that it just quickly becomes overwhelming. But luckily, you don't have to look far, because today we're going to be talking about one skill that, according to Forbes, is paying some people over $300,000 per year. More importantly, if you want anything to do with AI, whether that's working in the field or implementing it into your business, this skill is absolutely crucial for using the AI tools to the maximum effectiveness. Now, of course, that skill that I'm talking about is prompt engineering. Now, I don't want to set expectations that you're going to walk out of here immediately, just walk over to the nearest open AI headquarters and sign a $300,000 a year contract because that's not the case. But the goal of this video is to at least equip you with the beginning skills necessary and the tools you need to get started on your prompt engineering journey. So in today's video, we're gonna be covering the biggest issues with prompting, what exactly prompt engineering is, why it's so important, and finally, we're gonna be going over a couple different types of prompts that you guys can use in order to get the best outputs out of large language models like GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. First and foremost, what is a prompt exactly? Well, you might have a super basic idea because it's really simple. It's basically the same thing as asking another person a question. It's the input that you give to the AI model in order to get a response. Now, 99.9% .9 of people, except for babies who maybe can't talk, can ask people a question. If you walk up to someone on the street and say, what is a cat? That is the same thing as a prompt for AI. But the biggest issues arise when we try to get more personalized or more specific in what we want generated. With large language models, because they have such large pools of data, it's really hard to get the results that you want unless you're very specific with your prompting. This is also why people fine tune or train models off of specific data data because otherwise you're just going to get a super generalized response. Prompting itself is actually really simple. The prompt acts as the input to the large language model like GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 or DaVinci, Stable Diffusion, whatever you're using, and the AI model spits it back out in the form of an output, which is either like a text or an image. However, I like to describe AI as the ultimate blue balls of business. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you've tried AI before, whether that's ChatGPT or some other tool. You put in your prompt, you know, write copy for my agency landing page, and the output that it gives you is not quite what you want it to be. This is because most AI SaaS tools have very little fine tuning or training, and even sometimes very little prompting in general. Of course, this is just the state of the AI industry because it's such a big hot topic right now. The bar is just incredibly low. Most of these tools can get away with using basic models like GPT 3.5 Turbo with no fine tuning or training and they can just throw a price label on it and people will hop right onto it. Now for most people, this sours their taste of AI and they write it off as incomplete or not nearly where they want it to be when in actuality, with a little bit of fine tuning and training and some great prompting, it can be exactly what you want it to be. Now fine tuning, training, retrieval augmented generation, these are gonna be topics that we cover in another video. Today, I wanna focus on the bread and butter of it all. Prompting. Now, prompt engineering is essentially a technique or a skill that's used to guide the large language model, like GPT 3.5, towards the output that you want. This just helps it to provide accurate results that are tailored to your specific needs rather than some generic GPT BS. A large part of that is creating efficient prompts. So before we hop into the actual prompting itself, you need to understand the five key components of any type of prompt. First and foremost is the instruction. This is basically what you're telling it to do. You know, translate this, write that, etc. The next Next is context. Now this isn't necessary at all, but it helps to give the AI context so it understands what kind of output that you're wanting. Third is the input data. This is just the data that we need a response for. For example, if you ask what are cats, cats in this case would be the input data. And finally is output indicators. This basically indicates to the AI model how you want the output formatted, whether that's bullet points, tables, etc. Now before I waste any more of your time, let's hop into the actual prompting. Now as you can see here, I've got my handy dandy Google Sheet. We're going to go over a couple different types of prompts. We're going to cover zero shot prompting, one shot prompting, few shot prompting, and chain of thought prompting. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into it. Zero shot prompting is your basic prompt. You know, you're not providing any context. You're just asking it a question or telling it to do something. So if you say, write me a story about cats, that is a zero shot prompt. You're not giving it any parameters. You're just telling it to do something. So for example, a zero shot prompt might look like, tell me the 10 best niches to reach out to for SMMA or your AI 
AI agency, or it might very simply look like what are cats? That is a zero shot prompt. Now next, I'm not gonna show you that because I hope that concept is very basic to understand. If not, then this might be the wrong video for you. But anyways, one shot prompting. Now this is essentially providing the AI model with an example for context. This is why context is very important because it will form the way the AI responds to you. So for example, I say, tell me the five best niches to reach out to for SMMA in the following format. Niche one, e-commerce. Niche two, notice how there's nothing there. Let's go ahead and throw it in there. Throw it into GPT. I was messing around a little bit earlier. Boom. You see how it formats it the exact same way that I did? That is the benefit of one shot prompting. Whereas if you just said, tell me the 10 best niches for SMMA, it writes you this big blurb about each niche and why. But as you can see here, in my first example, I provided a why reach out, best places to reach out and outreach methods. And it did the same thing for every single example after that. That is a one shot prompt. Now next, we have few shot prompting. But before we hop into that, I'm gonna show you one more one shot prompt. This is a very simple example for those of you who want me to take it a little bit slower. Word one, hello. Translation, hola. Word two, bye. Translation, adios. Boom, that is a one shot prompt. I just threw it in there and it gave it to me in the exact same format. That is a one shot prompt. Next is few shot prompting. So this is basically doing the same thing, but with more examples. So having two examples would be few shot prompting. And it's kind of like a little mini training session for the AI model. It just provides more context for more accurate results, you know, better outputs. So for example, right here, this has three different examples and it's basically just AI sentiment analysis. So I said, categorize the text based on the sentiment. We're gonna go ahead and throw that in there. So for example, these are all positive, neutral, negative, and then finally, I have my last one, text. That was horrific. Sentiment, I'm gonna go ahead, negative. Boom. So that is few shot prompting. Now, this is also really great if you're, you know, building large spreadsheets of data. Because for example, if you're fine tuning an AI model, like I was for a client, he only gave me one example. So what I did, I broke it down into data points like this. And then I gave the AI model one example. It gave me an example back. And I took two of those, did a bit of a few shot prompt and generated over 100 examples to fine tune the AI model on. We'll cover that when we do our fine tuning video. But definitely, this is really useful for building spreadsheets of data, but we'll hop into that in another video. Don't worry about it too much right now. Finally is chain of thought prompting. Now, this is one I got off the internet, I think is a really good example. The whole point of chain of thought prompting is just like math class, when you were asked to show your work, show how you arrived at that answer. Chain of thought prompting is no different. You're essentially asking it to show its work, show how it arrived at that answer. This is especially important if you're asking to fact check, because as most of you might know, in recent months, you know, OpenAI, the accuracy isn't nearly as good as it used to be. So of course, it's important that we fact check our data. So this is a great example. It says the odd numbers in this group add up to an even number. Four, eight, nine, 15, 12, two, and one. Answer, adding all the numbers gives 25. The answer is false. So it's basically asking if it's true or false. And then, you know, in the prompt, you're showing your work. You're showing how you arrived to that conclusion. So this is no different. We're gonna go ahead and copy that, throw it in there. Basically asking it to show its reasoning. So we have all of these examples. Is it true or false? The odd numbers in this group add up to an even number. 15, 32, 5, 13, 82, 7, and 1. So we're asking it now, is this true or false? See what it says. As you can see here, it gave us its explanation. It gave us the reasoning. It told us exactly why. The answer is false. So that is what chain of thought prompting is. Now, all of these are super useful for businesses. Let's just go back to the landing page copy example. Say in your prompt, you break down the landing page by each category. So you have a header, the text in the header, you know, the body, the text in the body, you have pain points, the text in the pain points, all of that stuff you can use in your prompt as a one shot prompt once you have all of the copy from the landing page. And then you can say website two and it'll generate all the copy for website two. So this is genuinely no different. Let me see if I can actually find that one real quick. So this is a great example of some landing page copy that I was doing as a one shot prompt. So I found a website that I like, SynthAI, that is our website. If you wanna work with us, go check it out. As you can see here, I broke the entire website down into multiple different data points. So I have literally our guarantee, every single thing meticulously planned out. And it says landing page one copy. So I moved down. This was 
almost 60 different data points. So you guys do have to put in a little bit of work if you want really, really, really good results. But as you can see here, I was using GPT-4 and it came up with something perfect. It gave me a QER, a niche, timeline, all of this it came up with on its own. And the copy isn't half bad for only one example and using base GPT-4 as a model, no fine tuning, no training, the output it gave was pretty solid. So that is the power of one shot, few shot and chain of thought prompting guys. Do not sleep on it. So there you have it. Those are a couple different types of prompting that you can use to benefit yourself or your business. Now, again, I don't want to give you guys the wrong idea or mislead you into thinking that you're going to walk away this from this video and just you know, land a 300K a year job. But what I do wanna do is put the information out there when it comes to prompting. Now, of course, there's lots of different methods for prompt engineering, and a lot of them are much, much, much more complex than this. If you do wanna check them out, there's tons of prompt engineering guides on YouTube and on the internet as well. I'll be coming out with a lot more of them myself. So let me know if that's something that you guys wanna see. Even if you're not looking to land a job in AI, it's still useful to know how to prompt so you can better benefit your business. Now, before we wrap this up, you most likely fall into one of two categories. A, you're a complete beginner and you're just trying to learn as much about AI as possible and you're looking to leverage it to create an income or a business. Or B, you're already a business owner and you're trying to learn about AI to learn how you can leverage it to scale your business. If you're a complete beginner, you should definitely check out the Discord. The link is in the description as well as the comments down below. Definitely hop in there. We have a free and a paid version. Obviously the paid version is a lot better, but if you just wanna hop in there and chat with people in the free chat, that is perfectly fine too. If you are a business owner and you're looking to scale with custom tailored AI solutions, definitely in the description down below, book a free discovery call with us. This is not a sales call. You will not be sold anything on this call. It is merely to see if we can actually help you out or if there's any synergy there. If not, you get some actionable advice and we go our separate ways. So there's no obligation there to work with us whatsoever. We're just hopping on a call and seeing if we can help. Without further ado, if you guys like this video, be sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more content from me, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss another upload. Without further ado, I will see you guys later. Peace.